Hey guys, welcome to another Reaper blog tutorial. You guys seem to really like the video on audio testing or how to use these audio analysis plugins. So here's kind of a sequel to that. I got this idea from Mark Mozart from this site here. And he had this test session where it was a tone generator, uh, putting out different frequencies at different volumes. And he was using an EQ plugin with a frequency analyzer to show the harmonics. So I've kind of recreated that using the JS Tone Generator plugin, like I showed in the last video. And I've automated the wet mix and frequency. I'm actually gonna share this project with you so you don't have to go through the steps of setting this up for yourself. So if you're interested in downloading this, you can get it from my email newsletter. Uh, in the download section, there will be a link and you can get this along with some other Reaper related presets and things like that. On the track, I've got the tone generator, the frequency spectrum analyzer, like I showed before, as well as the spectrogram. And this is a different way of visualizing frequency. So the spectrum analyzer has decibels in the vertical and frequency across the horizontal, and the spectrum meter time in the horizontal axis and frequency through the vertical axis, plus it shows intensity based on the color from blue up to red. I'm going to step through these sequences and let's see what this does. So there should be no harmonics generated or anything. It should just be a clean tone that we're seeing both in the spectrograph and the frequency spectrum analyzer. Okay, so it steps through from 55 hertz to 110, 220, 440, then a sweep from 20 to 24,000, going up and then down and stopping at 100 hertz. Then there's a little gap where the output is muted so you can refresh your ears again. It repeats the sequence. First it's at minus 18, then minus 12, and then minus two. When you put in a plugin uh, in the middle of this chain, you will start to see the harmonics in both the meters. Oh, another thing that I did was use volume automation on the track so that the output levels are roughly equivalent. As I'm adding 60B to the tone generator, I'm taking 60B away from the track. So let's put on, I don't know, Recomp. The stock plugins are often considered to be sterile or transparent, um, just not really showing any character um, I don't find that to be the case with Recomp. It definitely has some character to it, and you will see that here. Uh, it does generate harmonics. It can be quite nasty if you intend it to be. So let's go through the, I don't know, the minus 12 sequence. And let's have a look at the harmonics. I'm gonna zoom in here so hopefully we can see everything. On this graph, we're seeing harmonics generated at each of those tones, uh, 55, 110, 220, 240, 440. Uh, one nice thing about this plugin, uh, when it's going in that sign sweep, we're not seeing any aliasing distortion. Let's uh, go through that sweep from 20 to 24,000 again, and there is no um, foldback distortion. So let's compare that to a plugin that would have fullback distortion. And for that, I'll use uh, Soundtoy's Devil Lock. And remember, this goes after the tone generator, before the meters. So let's go back to that 20 to 20K sweep and test that again, zooming in. As you can see, there's these red lines going up and down. That's frequencies hitting the upper limit of the capability of this plugin. Uh, it's folding back, creating harmonics back into the audible range. We can actually step through this. I'm gonna, I'm 
I apologize for that horrible sound, but... So instead of the frequencies going up, at a certain point, it starts going down again. As you increase the frequency of the tone, it's creating harmonics that are well below the original frequency. I'm continually going up in the frequency range, and at this point, it stops aliasing. There's a moment where it stops aliasing, and I'm still going up in the frequency range. I'm not, not even at 24,000 yet. At 24,000, we shouldn't hear anything, and we don't, but at 18,000, we shouldn't hear anything either. And there are tons and tons of harmonics being generated. Uh, the, the lowest one is at minus 42, which is quite loud. And the tone generator is at uh, 23,000. So we shouldn't hear anything. And if we turn off this plugin, we don't hear anything. Just one clean line up at the top here. That is the basics of how you use this. Put a plugin in between figure out where and when and how it's generating harmonics or changing the character of the sound. Most plugins will have something. Some of them will have nasty aliasing. Uh, some of them will be pretty clean all the way through. And this is just a way to kind of understand how much and what kind of uh, character these plugins have, what's actually noticeable, how far do you have to push things before it's noticeable, a lot of plugins have this kind of nastiness that looks terrible on these graphs, uh, but you put it in a mix and it sounds great. Overall, I just want you guys to have a better understanding of your tools and to know that when you're adding a plugin with a certain character, what it actually is doing to the frequency range, what harmonics is it adding, how much, uh, what frequencies. I think in the end, it will help you be a better engineer, make better mixes make better decisions about what you're doing in the mix. Once again, if you want this test session, sign up for my email newsletter. There's a link in the description and in the blog post. Once a month, I'm sending out an, an email with an update of what's happened in the past month, as well as occasional tips and tricks or special offers from sponsors. If you like this test session, you can get it there. Thanks a lot for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support the Reaper blog with Patreon and visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials.